Welcome to Dark Horse Auto and Diesel. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the front wheel bearing and hub assembly on a 2006 to 2012 Ford Fusion, Mercury Milan, Lincoln Zephyr, and Lincoln MKZ. Obviously the first thing you need to do is get the vehicle safely off the ground and get your wheel off. Next we need to pull all of our brake stuff off and you can pull the caliper and the whole bracket off as an assembly. There's two 15 millimeter bolts to do that. I prefer to take the caliper off separately. To me it makes it easier, but you do it how you want to do it. So to remove the caliper, there's two 14 millimeter bolts here. And always find some way to hang your caliper up. Don't let it hang off the hose because you can damage it. Now we'll take our brake pads off. That's cute. Man, what is with people not putting brake grease on their fucking pads? This is why you put brake grease on all of your hardware. mess with that later. So now we'll take these two 15 millimeter bolts off here and take the whole bracket off. And put anti-seize on all these bolts, but no brake grease. Smart. Now on the rotor, there's supposed to be two little screws right here that hold this on. Obviously these ones are missing. It's not really a big deal. They're, I think, T30. I don't remember right off the top of my head, but you can figure it out. And if they do get stuck or rounded out, you can just drill them out. And you don't necessarily have to put them back in. It's just a assembly aid, more or less. Now we can pop our rotor off, and if they get stuck like this one is, don't hit it with a regular hard hammer. I see people all the time online taking a, a sledgehammer and just wailing away on these things. That's a good way to crack them. Obviously, a cracked rotor is a serious problem. Always use a dead blow hammer like this, or if you don't have one, use a regular hammer, but hit on a block of wood. Don't just hit this with a steel-headed hammer. Terrible idea. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're not reusing your rotor, then you can do whatever you want. But... <sighs> Next, we'll remove our axle nut. That's going to be 32 millimeter or inch and a quarter. They're literally within a few thousandths of an inch difference. So inch and a quarter works perfectly fine, and that's what I have. Now make sure this is loose. Thankfully, mine is. If yours is stuck in there, they make pullers, or pushers, I guess, that attach to your lug studs here, and then you just turn a screw and it pushes in on this. Or what you can do is get a punch or something and put it in this little hole in the end here and knock on it with a hammer to knock this loose. Next, we'll remove this bracket here for the ABS sensor wire. That's going to be a 10 millimeter, so you're screwed now. Next, we'll come over to right here, and we'll remove that screw and take the sensor out of there so we don't damage it. Also a 10 millimeter. And then we'll just route this back here out of the way for safekeeping. So next, we'll come up here and take this off for your upper ball joint. This should be a 17 millimeter. Just thread that back on just a couple turns just to make sure that this doesn't come flying up on us. Now right here you'll see there's like a little nub sticking out. What we're going to do is lightly hammer on that and this should just pop out. Now with this you can use a regular steel headed hammer. Don't go crazy with it. This is cast iron so it can break. It does have a little bit of give to it but not that much. 
I see other videos where people are just beating the absolute fuck out of this thing, and that's stupid. And sometimes they're a bit stubborn, so run your nut up a little bit, and you can hit on this. And you always want to put the nut on there because if you drive straight on the end of the, uh, the joint there, you're going to booger your threads up and it ain't, you ain't going to be able to thread the nut back on. Now it's just a little safety precaution. I like to take a pry bar, and put it up to the spring up there, and just pull down a little bit on this so it doesn't just come flying out at us. Now we can pull this towards us a little bit and push in on the axle shaft. And what we're going to do is work our axle shaft out of here. Now at this point, there's two different ways you can go about doing this. You can go the route that we're going to do here and just use a bearing puller set and do it right here on the vehicle. Or you can remove the two lower ball joints and the tie rod end and then put this whole thing in a press and do it that way. And since I don't feel like messing with two ball joints and a tie rod, we're going to do it on the vehicle. So there's a lot of different variations on this type of tool. So yours is probably going to be set up different than mine. But this one here I got from O'Reilly, part number... 67213, I guess. Um, so I've got this adapter on here, adapter F, and tapered nut on the back side. So what this is going to do, we're going to tighten this nut down, and we're going to push the hub out this way. And this little collar here is going to hold it steady up against the knuckle. If you're using this exact tool, it's 15 sixteenths on this end, and inch and a sixteenth back here. Oh yeah, pulling it right out of there. As you can see here, the inner race came off with the hub. Now since we have a new hub, this is not a problem. If you're reusing your old hub, what I would do is just take an angle grinder and just cut almost all the way through this and then smack it with a chisel and it'll usually split apart enough that you can slide it off and reuse your old hub. But even if you are using a new hub, the fact that this happened is important for later. Now with the hub removed, we can see the snap ring that goes right in here. We need to remove that. And those usually get pretty seized up in there. So what we're gonna do is just take a chisel here and we'll get it broke loose. All right, the whole snap ring's spinning, so it's loose. Now we need to remove that. And be careful because sometimes these things go flying. Now inspect this. This one doesn't look too bad. We could reuse this, but the kit that I have came with a new snap ring anyway, so we're just gonna throw that one away. Next, we need to find the pieces in this kit that are going to fit our vehicle here. Having a helper is beneficial as well. Although you're kind of worthless. So what I'm using here is adapter sleeve S, which will fit nicely over that. And that allows the bearing to pass through. And you can test it with your new bearing. Make sure it fits over it. Now normally you would think that you would use uh, this step washer N here because it is just smaller than the outside diameter of the bearing. But unfortunately, that won't work. So on the back side of this knuckle here, this won't actually fit inside of there. So we actually need one that'll fit just inside of here. So step washer M seems to be the one that fits the best. just kind of fits in there. 
This is what the setup should look like at this point when we're ready to pull the bearing. We've got the support plate, our big screw, spacer plate, that adapter, the adapter on the back side, and then the nut. So we'll just tighten this up and it should hopefully pull that bearing right out. As you're going, make sure this stays centered up on here so it doesn't get all cockeyed and start pulling sideways and possibly damaging the knuckle. <clears throat> the instructions for this tool says not to use impact tools, so we're just going to pretend this part didn't happen. And there's our bearing. Next, we're going to want to clean up all this crap in here, especially around the snap ring area and then on the back side of the housing here so that our new bearing gets seated all the way. And obviously around here so that our snap ring stays in. Easiest way to do that is just a drill mounted wire brush. So I just found out that having a wire wheel that's not even round can actually be pretty beneficial. Nice and clean now. Now I always like to put a little, just a nice light coating of grease in here just to help assemble everything. And also if we ever do have to pull this out at a later time, it should hopefully make it a little bit easier. And I just use the cheapest grease I can find at Walmart. You don't need a bunch in here, but just a nice, nice thin coating. We put a bunch in, it's just going to squeeze out anyway. I want to get a little bit of extra in this groove. Keep that snap ring from rusting in place. Now to install our new bearing, we need to have something as a backing plate here. And the uh, support washer here, it's got that little taper to it that's supposed to fit inside the little support ring. What we're actually going to do is just place it this way, flat against the back run our bolt through it and then the adapter in because you want to push this in from the outer race you don't want to push on the inner race because you can just push that right on through or damage the bearing in some other way so this just fits around the outer race of it but obviously will still fit inside of our knuckle here so I'll get that assembled and show you what it looks like. And I did put a little light coating of grease on the outside of our new bearing. One thing you can do too, I've done it before, is stick this in the freezer to help shrink it up uh, maybe a couple hundred thousandths to help out, but I didn't think it was necessary this time. Now you're supposed to use the spacer collar on the back side here for this, but given our lack of room, I think we're perfectly fine doing it the way we are. I don't know if you could even get those pieces in there, and I'm not gonna try. And we'll make sure that this is sitting square. We don't wanna drive the bearing in crooked. If I was smart, I would've turned this around so that I could put the impact on it, or at least a ratchet. Once you get it in so far, loosen it up just a little bit, kind of wiggle it around, make sure everything's going in square. <clears throat> All right, there it stopped. Now what I'm going to do is just take a hammer with tension still on this and just lightly tap around this just to give it a little bit of shock to make sure that the bearing is fully seated in the knuckle. There's even a nice little flat spot right there like they intended on you to do that. All right. Back the pressure off. Now you want to take a look in here and make sure that the bearing is all the way back and you'll know because the little groove for your snap ring will be open. And it looks like ours is, so we'll get our snap ring installed. 
Now you're probably not going to be able to get this installed with regular snap ring pliers. So what I usually do is just kind of get it started in there and then just work around it. And then we'll just take our screwdriver and just lightly tap all the way around it to make sure that it's fully seated in the groove. And then I like to even kind of hit backwards on it here, the opposite of the way we broke it loose. There, the whole thing's spinning. So we're locked in. Next, we'll get our hub and start getting that installed. Now this part here, a lot of other people on YouTube screw it up and get this part wrong. Now, I imagine you didn't want to do this job the first time, and that means you probably really don't want to do it again in a year when your new bearing fails because you did something stupid on installation like a lot of other people do. What they'll do is they'll just take their new hub, or used one, it doesn't matter, and they'll just stick it in there and start pressing it in without supporting the inner race at all. Now, you remember what happened with our old one, how the inner race came out with the hub? That can happen the opposite way as well when you're pressing it into the new bearing. It likely won't happen, but either way, you're still putting a lot of stress on that bearing that doesn't need to be there. So what we need to do is find an adapter that fits just on this inner race here. And in the kit that I'm using, Step Washer I fits perfectly. Goes right on that inner race. So what we'll do is we'll put this on the back side and support the inner race and that's what we're actually going to use as our backer to press the new hub in. So we'll put a nice light coating of grease inside of here and then a little bit along the outside of our new hub or used, whichever you're using. And I'm just using the spacer plate directly against the hub. Fits nicely between the studs. And just take a look on the back side here. Make sure that's centered up on your inner race. Make sure this is pretty straight and we can start screwing it on. All right, she's tight. Now we can back it off. Now we'll just spin it a little bit, make sure it's smooth. Now we can get our axle shaft put back into the hub. And if you don't have any grease on the splines, I'd recommend you put some there. And then we'll get our axle nut started. We're not going to tighten it down yet, but just get it started on there to help hold things together. Now, everywhere you read, they're going to tell you, always use a new axle nut. I've reused them. I've reused them multiple times and never had a problem. So you decide if that's important to you. This kit just happened to come with a new nut, so obviously I'm going to use it. Now we'll get our upper ball joint put back in. Torque this nut to 35 foot pounds. Now we can get our brake rotor put back on. And if you have the screws, make sure they're lined up. Obviously, this one doesn't, so I'm not concerned about it. And then just snug those down. I don't know the torques back off the top of my head, but. If yours are missing, like mine, what I'm going to do is just throw a couple lug nuts on here real quick just to help hold the rotor in place while we get the rest of the brake stuff installed. It does make it easier. Then we'll install our bracket. And then we will torque these two bolts down to 80 foot-pounds. And it's a good idea while you're in here to make sure these move freely which 
these ones don't. So we're gonna pull those out and regrease those, but that's not for this video. Now we'll get our brake pads put back on. And don't forget about these little clips that make installation of the caliper much more difficult. That's fucking good. Then we'll get our caliper installed. And then torque these to 19 foot-pounds. Then we'll get our ABS sensor hooked back up here. I don't have a torque spec for these bolts, just uh, snug is fine. Next, we'll torque the axle nut. The factory says 180 foot-pounds, but the manufacturer of the bearing says 188, actually 185 to 188. Not sure why they have a difference. But we're gonna go with 188 since they made the bearing. Now you have to torque this down before you put any weight down on it. Otherwise, you'll damage your bearing. So what you'll need to do is figure out some way to hold this from spinning while you torque it down. I have an assistant in the driver's seat ready to hold the brake pedal down for me. Then next we're going to stake this in right here up into that little groove. And they say at least a millimeter, so that's not very hard to do. That's not going anywhere. Now we'll get a wheel put back on. Then once we got it set back down on the ground, we'll torque our lug nuts to 95 foot-pounds in a cross pattern. And make sure Within about 50 to 100 miles, you retorque these down. And if any of them spin when you retorque them, in another 50 to 100 miles, retorque them again until they no longer move. I've neglected to do that before and nearly paid the price. Having a wheel nearly come off at 60 miles an hour is not fun. And since we had the brakes off, before you put it in gear, make sure you pump the brakes up a little bit, because otherwise you may end up going into your toolbox or through your garage door. And then one last step. Probably the most important one. <coughs> Celebration beer.